I've been waiting for you. I've got such fun things for us to do today. So why don't you get your materials and we'll get started. Hopefully you have your hundreds chart nearby for today. We're going to be using it for several different parts of our lesson. The first thing I want to talk about is it's kind of obvious, but I like to think about how we can use the hundreds chart in the first place. So let's just look at some of the characteristics of it. First of all, when we're counting, it's just like reading in a book. We're going to go from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? But then when we want to continue counting, we actually have to go around the corner and down the street. Did you notice that? We don't want to go from here to here because then we would be counting by what? If I went 10, 20, 30, 40, what are we counting by? That's right. That's counting by tens. But in this moment, I want you to count by ones with me. So here we are at the 10. We're going to go around the corner and down the street for 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. What has to happen now? You bet. We've got to go around the corner and down the street. And that's how we can continue counting and using our 100 chart to help us count. Let's do some other activities. I am going to use my little colored discs here. And I'm thinking of a pattern or a way of counting. And I wonder if you can figure out what I am doing and think to yourself where I'm going to put my next colored disc. I wonder if it's obvious to you already. Do you see any kind of a pattern? Um, I'm not trying to create a pattern with the colored discs. I'm wondering if you can notice a pattern with the numbers underneath my discs. And the last one goes right there. What was the first number that I covered up? The number two, right? Well, when I dropped below the two and covered up the 12, what was I counting by? Do you know? That's right. In this whole row, I'm counting by tens. But because I have a two in the ones column, did you notice that every other number, 12, 22, 32, 42, can you hear it? 52, 62, 72, 82, 92. And we could go on, couldn't we? All right, I'm gonna do a completely different pattern, totally different. And at home, you can play this on your own. You can create a pattern and get someone else in your family to guess what it is you're doing. Okay, so, hmm, I'm going this way. Let's see if you can figure out what my next disc will cover. Is that the one you thought it was or is it different? Hmm, what's going to be next? Oh, I just want to do a different color. I don't have a different color next to the blue. And this one, let's just do one more. All righty. I used our hundreds chart to help me count by what number? Let's hear it out loud. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. What were we counting by there? We were doing multiples of three. We could cover the whole chart that way and teach ourselves the multiples of three. And it's kind of a fun little chant when you get going. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty. And you could go on that way. So you can see that we can use the hundreds chart for several different things. Okay, we can also um, pick a number and let's think about one more or one less than that number. So 
How about I choose this number? 34. But let's use our chart to help us figure out what 1 less than 34 is. Let's start on the 34 and we'll hop away to a lower number. 1 less than 34 is 33. Great. Again, let's say what's 1 more than 34. We're going to start on the 34 and hop one more going in the higher direction. And we've got 35. That's pretty simple. All right, you're getting so good at this. I think let's make it a little more challenging. I'm going here. 86. How about what number is 3 less than 86? You're so fast at this. I can't even keep up with you, but I'm going to count it out also. I'm going to count backwards by three. One, two, three. Three less than 86 is 83. My hundreds chart is really coming in handy for this, isn't it? Well, let's think about three more than 86. Now we can use the chart, but I always love for you to do some imagining even before you use the tool in front of you. Can you think about what six plus three equals? Let's check it. One, two, three. Six plus three equals nine, doesn't it? So 86 plus three gives us 89. You are really good at this. We've done just a few practices together and you can also do a lot more of that on your own. But how about we say, I want 10 more than 19. Which direction do I go on the chart? Well, I know that the number needs to be larger because I'm talking about more. And what's really handy about my hundreds chart is that when I want to count by 10, I simply have to go to the row below. Do you remember how we counted by tens starting with two in this row? Two, 12, 22. We were counting by multiples of 10. So if I'm at 19 and I want 10 more, I just drop down. 29. And we could say, what about 40 more than 19? We know that every time we drop down a row, we're counting by 10. So we're going to go down how many rows if we want to count by 40? That's right, we'll go down four rows. So let's try it. One, two, three, four. 19 plus 40 is 59. We could say 19 minus 10 and go up. What do we get? We get a nine. So we can see all the different uses here. Let's use the chart to do a larger subtraction problem. 75 minus 32. Can you think about how we could solve that problem using the chart? Well, remember we've talked about using the tens and in the number 32, we've got three tens. So let's go three rows up. One, two, three. We've taken 30 away from 75, but remember I said 32. So we've got one, two, and we land right here. So we can say 75 minus 32. We've used our chart to get our answer, 43. So this is a really great tool for us to use. Let's try this problem. problem, we're going to go to the edge. 61 is right here on the edge. If I'm going to take 3 away, I have to be careful about the direction I go. I can't go this way because that's taking away 10s. So this time we have to go down the street and around the corner. So we're going to slide down the street and go around the corner. And this is the first one that I count for taking away 3. 1, 2, 3. Right? 61 minus 3 gives us 58. How about, let's say we're on 50 and we want to add 6 to that. Following that same process, which way would we go? 
Now many of you can solve this mentally, but let's also use our chart to check it. We're going to go around the corner and down the street. One, two, three, four, five, six. You got it. 50 plus six gives us 56. Okie dokie. So now we're going to do a little activity that I think is kind of fun. And um, you probably already have your other little worksheet with you, but I'll take you through the problems as well. All right, so hopefully you have Appendix 14 with you and I'm gonna show you how we'll do this activity. Okay, let's start with the number 63. This time we're going to use arrows to give us directions and let's see if we come out with the correct number at the end. From 63, I want you to first go up and then do you see that the arrow has us going right back down again? That's where we started. And then it's going to have us go to the right and to the right again. And that lands us on 65. So we're just following directions and playing with the numbers, getting used to moving around on our hundreds chart. Let's do another one. This time, let's start on 27 and I have some more complicated directions for you and I'm gonna take my time. So at home, you have a chance to move your, um, you can use Unifix cubes or pennies or any little thing that you have to put on your chart. So start on 27. You're gonna go on the diagonal to the right and you've got your little arrow in front of you on the diagonal to the right. So here we go, I'm going up to the right. Whew. That's our first move. Your next move is to go over one to the right. Did you go here? We're going to go move one to the right again. <laughs> Did you go there? All righty. Now we're going to go down one. Let's see, where are we going to land? When you're looking at it, can you imagine if we go down where we're going to land? And then we're going back to the left. Where will we go next? We've got that there. We're gonna do two more moves. Move down one. There we go. And now I want you to move down diagonally to the left. Let's see where we go. Whew, we ended up at 48. That's a long way from where we started. Okay, we've got, I've got just one more for you. Now, what would be really great at home is every time we move based on the arrows on our page, you at home say, how many have we taken away or how many have we added by those moves? So this time we'll start with 100 and now we're gonna do our moves. Your first move is up left to the diagonal. Which number is diagonal? There we go. I wonder if you can think about how many we took away to get from 100 to 89. We are going to go up to the left again. There you go. Just to keep it kind of silly, now we're going to drop down just one. But remember that when we're dropping down on our chart, what are we counting by? Down to there. And we're going over one to the left. When I go over one to the left, am I taking something away or adding something? Taking one away when we slide to the left, right? Okay, now we're going to slide up. What am I adding or subtracting when I slide up? Did you say 10? We took 10 away to slide up. And the final one is to slide down to the left diagonal. Whew. So there's some ways that we can play with our hundreds chart and use it to help us think about numbers in a really exciting way. All right, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.